Hi, my name is Wei Yu. The title of my talk is Learn to be informed and to reflect without explicit channel estimation. This is joint work with my students and postdocs, Tang Tao Jiang, Victor Chen, Flash Rabi, and Kari Antia at the University of Toronto. So this talk is about how to use machine learning to optimize wireless communication systems. So here's an example of a massive MIMO mini media wave system. But the idea is that you need to design the pre-coding matrix at the, at, the, at the base station in order to focus electromagnetic wave toward the intended users. Now, conventional communication systems are always designed as a two-step process. We first estimate the channel. Then, based on the estimate channel, we perform system optimization. But the channel estimation problem for massive MIMO system is challenging because we have a large number of antenna array and a large number of antennas and a large number of users. And the main question that we ask in this talk is, can we use machine learning to bypass channel estimation and directly optimize the system? So here's another example where channel estimation is challenging. So this is a so-called intelligent reflective surface environment. The, the, the idea is that we have a surface comprised of a large number of intelligent scatters, and we could adjust the phase shifts in these, uh, in these uh, scatter elements in order to uh, refocusing the electromagnetic uh, uh, wave toward the intended users. So this is ideally suited for passive uh, beam forming. And the, uh, so because the overall system, uh, the overall wireless propagation environment can be enhanced uh, by these adjustable phase shifts. But the design of this IRS, IRS system is also challenging. This is because the IRS cannot perform active transmission, signal transmission and reception. And further, we have large number of passive elements, so there are lots of channel coefficients to estimate. And further, even if you have estimated the channel, the system optimization is also challenging because we have a high dimensional problem and those problems are typically not complex. So in this talk, we're gonna look into a, a way of optimizing a system objective based on received pilots, but without explicit channel estimation. And we see that by bypassing channel Channel, channel, channel estimation step, uh, this machine learning approach can, uh, can, can provide a significant advantage. So we can think about what machine learning is versus uh, mathematical programming. The traditional optimization approach to wireless communication system design always require highly structured models over well-defined problems. But finding the solution efficiently rely on specific and often convex optimization landscape. So the model defines the landscape, and the, once the landscape is defined, then you can find the parameter that maximizes, uh, find the uh, that, that gives the optimized solution. But instead of this model then to optimize approach, we can think of a neural network approach that could map directly from the model parameter to the optimized solution. And this is because when we think about it, what the mathematical op, uh, algorithm is is that an algorithm is basically a mapping from a problem instance to an optimized solution. So we could conceivably train a neural network to mimic this mapping. And when a new problem comes along, then we could just run this neural network to get a desired solution. So let's see how to apply this to the R system. You see, traditionally, communication systems, communication en engineers have invested heavily on channel models. The models are inherently only an approximation of the reality, and the model parameter needs to be estimated, and there's an inherent estimation error. So what machine learning approach allows us to do is to skip modeling stage and to pursue an end-to-end -end communication system design. And the main advantage is that it uh, allows us to directly optimize without intermediate uh, channel estimation step. Um, it allows us to implicitly account for channel estimation error and uh, mostly uh, allows us to reduce the amount of pilots needed. But there are also uh, different challenges uh, associated with the machine learning approach. When you design a framework that tailors the system architecture uh, to the specific problem, we need to ensure that the uh, approach is generalizable and interpretable, and we're going to talk about this uh, later in this talk. So in this talk, I'm going to give two examples where these high dimensional optimization problem can be solved uh, using machine learning approach. And the first example is the RS system. Then we're going to come back to uh, the massive MIMO system toward the end of this talk. So here's, uh, again, the uh, uh, overall system model for the intelligent surface uh, environment. And as I mentioned before, channel estimation, both channel estimation and system optimization is challenging, are, are challenging for the RS system. 
So let's first formulate the problem. The overall problem formulation is as follows. We're going to design the beamformer at the base station and the reflective coefficients at the RS such that the overall system objective, so for example here is sum rate, uh, is, is, is maximized. But this optimization problem in the traditional sense needs to uh, uh, be based on the estimated channel. And the estimated channel needs to be uh, inferred from the received pilots. So in a conventional approach, we first estimate the channel, then optimize the beamformers and, uh, and, and the reflections. Uh, but in, in, in our proposed approach, um, we, 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 we recognize that this overall problem is really a problem of finding a mapping from the received pilots to the optimized solution. So we're going to use a machine learning approach to find this optimized map. Okay. So here is our proposed approach. We assume uh, uplink downlink reciprocity. We assume a TDD system, so we can have uplink channel to be the uh, transpose of the, of, the, of, the, of the downlink channel. So we, we first have an uplink a pilot phase. Each user transmit a pilot in the uplink. Then we have a downlink phase uh, 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 that, that, that that, that, that transmit data from the base station uh, through IRS to the, to the users. So a neural network is here. What it does is it takes the received pilots, you first do a match filtering to find the received pilots for each user, then based on these received pilots, without first going through channel estimates, it directly come up with the optimized reflective coefficient and the uh, beamformer at the base station. Okay, so essentially we're using the neural network to represent the mapping and we're going to find the optimal mapping. And uh, what we are doing is really parameterizing the problem. We parameterize the channel by the received pilots instead of the conventional uh, channel model. OK, so what kind of uh, neural network architecture should we use? So conceivably, we can just use a fully connected neural network to find this mapping. But a better, better approach is to, um, to, to use a, a graph neural network to model the interaction between the users and the, and, and the RS. You see that we are, we're designing the reflective coefficients, and this uh, is at RS, and we're, gonna, we're designing the beamformers, and then we have one beamformer for every user. So we can represent the relationship between the RS and the users in terms of a graph. And further, we want to enforce the permutation invariance and the permutation equivariance property with respect to the uh, uh, users uh, with respect to the RS and the users respectively. So what we mean is as follows. Suppose that we permute the index of these users. We want the RS coefficients to remain the same, and this is so-called permutation invariant. And further, uh, if we permute the uh, index indices of these users, we want the, uh, the, the beamformers to permute in the same way. Uh, so this is what we mean by permutation equivariance. So here's an example of a graph neural network architecture that enforces this permutation invariance and equivariance. So we have d layers, but we have a k different path, one for every user, and we have a separate path for the RS. So what we design is we can design these aggregation and combination units in such a way that the permutations of the inputs is uh, invariant, uh, that the output is invariant with respect to the permutation of the inputs. So this is found to be a very effective approach uh, that allows us to train the neural network uh, with fewer uh, amount of data and to, to, because this neural network architecture uh, matched the system architecture uh, in, in, in a better way than the conventional uh, fully connected neural network. So here's how the system uh, performs. So here's an, uh, some simulation setting of a base station with an RS with number of users. Uh, this is the channel model that we use. We have uh, a rising channel from the user uh, from the base station to the RS and really fading channel from the base station to the to the to the to, uh, to the users. So here is the downlink sum rate uh, as a function of the amount of pilots that we we, uh, uh, we use. So the red curve is the proposed the RS approach, and this is to can be compared with the, the 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 blue curve. This is the traditional channel estimation followed by optimization approach. We see that the sum rate, at the same sum rate, we save considerable amount of pilots. So also interesting is this black curve. So here we use a neural network to explicitly estimate the channel. And once the channel is estimated, then we perform the conventional optimization. You see that the combined approach that bypass channel estimation performs much better 
uh, in the sense that it saves uh, a considerable amount of pilots. Another uh, important advantage of the neural network is that it's able to incorporate lots of uh, any kind of signing information. So here's an example of a neural network that incorporates locations of the user as signing information. You see that we can further save pilots uh, if this additional signing information is provided as input to the neural network. We would like to also interpret the solution from the graph neural network. We want to take a look at the array response at the base station and the array response at the RS and to see what the solution actually gives us. So here's an example of a single user at a two different locations, scenario one and scenario two. And let's look at what kind of array response did the base station uh, get and what kind of array response does IRS get as a function of the location. So here is the simulation results from the IRS. And here is the array response for the base station. You see that the RS is able to, able to focus exactly at where the, this location of the user is. So here, location is parameterized by the azimuth and elevation angles. And the, when the user moves to a different location, it goes to a different one. It, it's now focusing to a different location. On the other hand, at the base station, the base station always focus its electromagnetic uh, radiation toward the RS because it's relying on the RS to do the reflection. Okay. So you see here that the base station and the RS is doing sensible things. Uh, we're getting interoperable results. Here's another example of three user system. Here we're maximizing the minimum weight. So here we're plotting the base station uh, array response as well as the RS response. These are the location of the three users. We see that uh, again the RS is focusing its, its being toward these three different, different locations. Interestingly, the, the, the power of the focusing is different for the three users uh, because this is a more challenging environment than just a single user system. But what is it doing is it's actually able to join and design the beamformer and the reflective coefficient design so that uh, whenever we have a weaker amount of focusing by RS, we use a larger uh, uh, base station array response to compensate so that the overall signal to noise ratio is about the same for all three users. Okay, this doesn't make sense because we're maximizing the minimum rate. Okay, so this is the, uh, about the RS. Now let's go back to the millimeter wave mass in MIMO system and to, see, to, to, to show that the similar approach can also be uh, applied to the mass in MIMO system. So now if you have a TDD system, time division duplex uh, mass in MIMO system, then the same kind of approach can also be applied. But what if we have an FDD system? So this means that the channel estimation needs to happen in the downlink, uh, then the user needs to estimate the channel, then feedback the estimated channel to the base station in order for the base station to do pre-coding. So this is a more challenging system because now we have to do channel estimation. Then we also have the quantization and feedback stage at each user. So the, the, the intelligence not at the edge. Then this, this uh, quantized uh, channel needs to be feed, fed back to the base station for the base station to do multi-user pre-coding. But again, we can use a neural network approach. What we can do is we can put a neural network at the user side and put a neural network at the base station side so that this set of neural networks can jointly work together subject to the quantization weight constraints in order to maximize the overall objective. So again, we don't explicitly do channel estimation, rather we do this feedback, quantization feedback, and the pre-coding together by training this overall neural network together in order to maximize this objective. And that, that's, very, uh, that's more effective than the explicit channel estimation approach. So here are some numerical results. So here is the sum rate as a function of feedback capacity. You see that this is the neural network approach. It outperforms all the explicit channel estimation or the uh, conventional approach in terms of saving the pilots. Okay, so this dash curve is using neural network first to estimate the channel, then to optimize the system. This is a combined approach that combines the channel estimation and system optimization. So let me summarize this talk. Uh, the traditional paradigm for communication system, system design is to model then to optimize. But what machine learning allows us to do is to be data-driven. We showed that we can perform multi-user beamforming and reflective coefficient design without explicit channel estimation for the RS system. And we can also do uh, channel estimation, feedback, and pre-coding uh, without an explicit channel model. The key advantage is that we are able to account for model uncertainty and channel estimation error. And the key issues are generalizability, interoperability, and the neural network architecture 
uh, which we have addressed in this talk. How far can we push machine learning? It's a very interesting question, and there are many open questions and open problems. I think this, this, this is an extremely uh, in, interesting area for future wireless uh, communication system design. So let me conclude this talk by showing these uh, two, two, three references where the material for this uh, talk is, is based. Thank you very much for your attention.